Dr. Shijilek, and good morning, everyone. So hope you are keeping yourself warm. It's a little bit cold today. <laughs> um, so today, um, uh, I was invited to give a, a, a kind of a class, a course, on uh, entering the middle way, right? middle way, Umajuba, uh, by Trishita. Actually, a few months ago, and uh, I was, I felt so honored to give this. Uh, when I hear somebody requesting me to give this, so I was so happy, and um, and then I immediately said yes, I will do it. But then right after they left, then I felt like. Am I ready to do this? <laughs> and this is the text, uh, very, very precious. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> normally we hear emptiness, emptiness, uh, and especially Tibetan Buddhism, people who get interested in Tibetan Buddhism, and they always get kind of joy of practicing emptiness. <laughs> so uh, this is the, actually the kind of a, uh, a door to enter to the uh, practice of emptiness. Um, and it's a really vast uh, subject and uh, one can get into this very deeply. But uh, my uh, uh, experience in this and uh, uh, my education into this is uh, very limited. Maybe a little bit better than some of you, uh, but um, cannot um, compare some people uh, uh, in here, like uh, Anila, uh, who will help me today, and uh, Tushita. Uh, it's uh, really funny because to, I said I need a translator because my English is uh, limited, so I need a backup. And then normally I have uh, uh, some people who will help me. And I was not expecting Anila will come to help me <laughs> on this. Now, before I was thinking like, yeah, most of people, maybe they didn't, uh, study this, so I can say whatever I want. <laughs> but now I, I'm in a trouble. <laughs> mm. So uh, actually, uh, the one good thing is uh, I will bring, tr try to bring my full awareness when I'm saying something. So and uh, Anila will uh, also I request Anila to. Uh, say directly if something that important things that I need to share, and then uh, uh, Anila you can just poke me. So, uh, so we can say you all are in good hands. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so uh, now it's very necessary to set our motivation. Uh, strongly, uh, because uh, this subject uh, is designed uh, for a practitioner who wants to overcome the suffering, not escape from the suffering. Uh, so that means uh, the, per the practitioner or the participant you know, that we all have to ask, <clears throat> what is Chandrakirti going to give us uh, to overcome the suffering, and especially how to uh, how to uh, eliminate the suffering? Together with the imprints or uh, with the seeds, actually, the seeds. So, how to get rid of the seed of the suffering? 
So we need to have this kind of a, uh, a kind of intention or to have a motivation. So in order to uh, to have this kind of a, uh, mindset, then one should uh, try to enter into the middle way. Okay, so uh, first we will do Sangyu uh, Chozoma to set the motivation. So most of you might know what uh, we, when uh, we say Sangyu Chozoma and uh, maybe Anila, you can say one time in English so people will get what we are saying. Okay, so three times. First I will say that in the Tibetan. <coughs> Sanji Jodan, Zodi, Jodan, the Chanju, Bodo, Dane, Jasunje, and Daje, Jinson, gave it to them, and Dola, Benji, Sanji, and Jugosu. Sanji Jodan, Zodi, Jodan, the Chanju, Bodo, Dane, Jasunje, and Daje, Jinson, gave it to them. Dola, Benji, Sanji, Jugosu, Sanji, Jodan, Zodi, Jodan, the Chanju, Bodo, Dane, Jasu. Daye Jinzo gave a son of the Andola Penje Sanje Drupajo. I take refuge until I'm enlightened in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. From my merits of listening to the Dharma, may I become a Buddha to benefit transmigrated beings. Okay. And for all those who have this, mm -hmm. uh, and then please share if you don't have one. So if you do have this one, please share it. We don't have enough, so it would be wonderful if you maybe can share. Okay. Thank you. Born from great compassion, aspiring to help all beings, God of gods, you have attained the savior state of abandonment and realizations. And you guides being through the discourse of dependent origination. However, one, the son of speech, I bow my head to you. I bow at your feet, O Nagarjuna, most skilled in elucidating suchness free of elaborations, the essence of the mother of conqueror sutras, through the reasoning of dependent origination. In accord with the conqueror's prophecy, you initiated the middle way. I bow to your principal son, Bodhisattva Arya Aridega, most learned and realized, who has crossed the ocean of Buddhist and non-Buddhist philosophies, and, and is, is the, the crown, crown of jewel of the those of <laughs> Nagajunas treatises. I bow to you, O Buddha Palita, who has reached the supreme adept state and who has clearly elucidated noble Nagajuna's intent, the final meaning of dependent origination, the profound points of existence as mere designation and as mere name. I bow to you, O Master Bhaviveka. Most accomplished Pandita, you initiated a philosophical tradition wherein while negating such extremes as the arising of truly existing things, one upholds commonly verified knowledge as well as external reality. I bow to you, O Chandakirti, you who disseminated all the paths of Sutra and Tantra. You are most skilled in teaching the profound and the vast aspects of the Madhya Bay, the union of appearance and emptiness, dispelling the two extremes by means of dependent origination that is mere conditionality. I bow to you, O Bodhisattva Shantideva, most skilled at revealing the path assembly, most fortunate tr spiritual trainees, the excellent path of commission that is most wondrous, the reliance of reasoning most profound and vast. I bow to you, O Master Abba Chantarakshita, who initiated the tradition of non-dual middle way in accordance with the trainee's mental disposition. You are versed in the reason modes of both middle way and valid condition. You who disseminated the congress teaching in the lands of snow. About your feet, O Kamalashila, you who, having explained excellently the stages of meditation of the middle way, view from the free from elaborations and the union of tranquility and insight in accordance with the sutra and tantra, flawlessly elucidated the congress teachings in the land of snows. I bow at your feet, O Asanga, you who, sustained by Maitreya, were versed in disseminating excellently all Mahayana scriptures and taught the vast path, and you who, in accord with the Congress prophecy, initiate the tradition of the middle way, O mind only. 
I bowed your feet, O Master Vasubandhu, you who, while upholding the systems of the seven Abhidharma treatises, as well as non-duality, clarify the tenets of Vaibhashika, Satrantika, and mind only, foremost among learned ones, you are renowned as the second omniscient one. I bow at your feet, O Dignaga, the logician, you who, in order, present the Buddha's way through evidence-based reasoning, opened hundredfold gateways of valid cognition and offered as a gift to the world the eyes of critical intelligence. I bow at your feet, O Dhammakirti, you who, understanding all the essential points of both Buddhist and non-Buddhist epistemology, brought conviction all the profound and vast path of Sautrantika and mind only by means of reasoning. You were worth most worst in training in the excellent Dharma. I bow at your feet, O Vimukti Sena, you who lit the lamp that illuminates the meaning of the ornament treatise, wherein the themes of perfection of wisdom, stemming from Asanga and his brother, were expounded in accord with the middle way view, free of existence and non-existence. I bow to you, O Master Haribhaja, you who are prophesied by the conqueror as expounded of the meaning of the mother perfection of wisdom. You elucidated the excellent treatise on the perfection of wisdom, the three mothers in perfect accord with the instructions of the Savior Maitreya. I bow at your feet, O Guna Prabha, most excellent in both integrity and scholarship, who, having excellently distilled the intent of 1,100 disciples' teach disciplinary teaching, expounded the individual liberation vows, flawlessly according to the tradition of the Shravastivada school. I bow at your feet, O Shakya Prabha, supreme upholder of the discipline, who reigned over the treasury of jewel of the three trainings. In order to disseminate the stainless discipline teaching for a long time, you excellently expounded the meaning of the vast discipline treaties. I bow to you, O Master Atisha, who having taught all the profound and vast traditions related to the worlds of the Buddha within the framework of the path of the persons of the three capacities, were the most kind master disseminating the Buddha's teaching in the land of snow. Having thus praised this most learned ornament of the world, the excellent source of wondrous and insightful teachings, May I, with a mind unwavering and pure, be blessed so that my mind becomes ripened and free. By understanding the two truths, the way things exist, I will ascertain how, through the four truths, we enter and exit samsara. I will make firm the faith in the three jewels that is born of valid reason. May I be blessed so that the root of liberating path is firmly established within me. May I be blessed to perfect the training in renunciation an aspiration for liberation, the total pacification of suffering and its origin, as well an uncontrived awakening mind that is rooted in an infinite compassion that wishes to protect all sentient beings. May I be blessed so that I may easily develop conviction in all the paths pertaining to the profound points of the perfection and Vajra vehicles. By engaging in study, reflection and meditation on the meaning of the treatises of the great trailblazers, May I, in life after life, obtain excellent embodiment that support the three trainings and make contribution to the teaching that equal the great trailblazers in upholding and disseminating the teaching of scripture and realization through engaging in exposition and meditative practice. May the members of all spiritual communities spend their time in learning, reflection, and meditation through the proliferation of supply masters who shun wrong livelihood. May the great face of the earth be beautified throughout all times. Through their power, may I traverse all the paths of sutra and tantra and attain the conqueror's omniscience, characterized by spontaneous realization of the two purposes. May I work for the welfare of sentient beings as long as space remains. And now we do the mandala offering, which just comes directly afterwards. But we add another phrase, so you might not have it, so then you can just contemplate on uh, requesting that um, our teacher right now, Sekhon Sencha Brimbuji, will teach for us. Sachi Pekki Dorji
just made a homage uh, to His Holiness and my teachers. Today what I am going to share is, uh, it's not something that uh, it just instantly came in me and I'm sharing this. This is due to the kindness of my teachers and uh, His Holiness Dalai Lama. So I got a uh, great opportunity to learn to practice and to most uh, importantly uh, to sh share knowledge with the, my classmates. And then as in the West we say, uh, when we study the most fun part is brain, brainstorming. So I had this opportunity with my classmates and to time to time check with my teachers and try to bring this into practice. Yes, it's difficult to bring into practice, but for, for um, the most important part is, before bringing into the practice, we need to uh, have a kind of a taste or the flavor that it makes that I really want it. So it, this is necessary. So this is why uh, uh, just uh, before uh, what I'm saying, we uh, we just made a praise to the seven Nalanda Pintidas, uh, remembering uh, seventeen uh, Nalanda Pintidas. So their kindness, way of their dialogues, their their teaching styles. So uh, it's amazing. So. Um, more you study, more you will get more new ideas. And then, uh, uh, actually, <coughs> mm -hmm. studying, uh, if you just look at this, what are these great masters are saying, and uh, they are giving a new ideas, just looking into this, that's just merely studying only. But if your research is more like all these teachings, how that really helps me to become a better person? How does that really bring improvement in my compassion? And then especially why we need compassion and what does that mean? And what is the, the full image or the full picture or the full definition of compassion. Uh, right now, what my understanding about uh, the uh, compassion, is it real compassion or not? This kind of a doubt is needed. And then once, now today, we are going com coming to, to the, where Chandrakirti will make a special homage to the compassion. So in there, how these great masters uh, sees about compassion. This is needed for us. So, um, for that reason, uh, uh, maybe Tushita had this idea and asked for this particular text. So if you look at this text, it won't, I, I cannot finish this in, uh, maybe let's say eight, nine, ten hours. So that means for, for like in three days, we cannot finish it. Uh, but most importantly, we will, uh, the first few pages we will cover about the compassion part. And then uh, we will pick up, I will pick up some kind of important uh, things which if I feel like it's necessary to discuss or to share with you, I will do this. 
So, yeah, so fasten your seatbelt. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. So, as uh, it is necessary, uh, before going into the text, uh, if you uh, look at the, how His Holiness Dalai Lama prays uh, Chandakirti, <coughs> uh, the, the Seven Nalanta Pendita, the, the verse 6, right? 17. Yeah. Yeah, 17. <laughs> Jesangata Sangi so Rinpoche just read verse 6 of the 17 Nalanda Masters. So as Rinpoche did in Tibetan, I'll read it in English. I bow to you, Chandakirti, who disseminated all the path of Sutra and Tantra. You're most skilled in teaching the profound and vast aspects of the Middle Way, the union of appearance and emptiness, dispelling the two extremes by means of dependent origination, that is, mere conditionality. And then Rinpoche explained, well, what Chandakirti being praised here and being the author of this text. So what he explains is mainly emptiness. And of course, emptiness has been explained before Chandakirti, before Chandakirti taught, and of course afterwards as well. But what is so unique about Chandakirti in this way of, well, uh, teaching the, the intent or teaching, teaching what the Buddha's uh, intent was for teaching the Buddha's uh, thought, in other words. So teaching emptiness, teaching emptiness. So what is so special about him that he taught emptiness in such a way that by reason of emptiness, so explain, by reason of emptiness, because phenomena are empty of inherent existence, therefore actions, agents, and objects are possible. So activities, the agents that perform them, the objects, all that is possible. Likewise, because phenomena lack inherent existence, therefore they are independently, they're, they're interdependently existent. They exist as dependently arisen or dependently originated. So this is a, a unique way of teaching uh, emptiness, teaching emptiness in such a way. Which is also why Chandakirti is described as a trailblazer and of the different types of trailblazer, trailblazers, he's described as the trailblazer of the Madhyamika uh, Prasangika uh, tenet school, or the Madhyamika Prasangika tenet system. The trailblazers, you know? Shingde Sojit. Shingde Sojit. Shingde Sojit. So Rumshi asked this Tibetan word, Shingde Sojit. Uh, I say some people translate it as pioneer. Uh, it, it literally means someone who created a path, 
-hmm. like a blazed trail, in other words. So a trailblazer is probably a more <laughs> literal <laughs> translation. <laughs> no. mm. Odice, datene, uh, I'm going through the Lama Tsongkhapa's the commentary on the entering to the middle way. So this is uh, which I uh, quite familiar with this text. So that's why I'm uh, choosing this text. Uh, so in there, I'm not going to read whole thing. So uh, Lama Tsongkhapa uh, uh, wrote a praise to three uh, main, uh, 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 actually this, uh, all three great masters are in the uh, 17 uh, Pintitas. But here, especially Lama Tsongkhapa said, in order to understand Nagarjuna's uh, the point of view on emptiness, if you really wanted to know the, the, uh, the depth of the uh, uh, experience of Nagarjuna's way of understanding emptiness, then we need to look at the uh, three masters, particularly three masters texts. We need to get familiar with this. So the three masters are, one is the Chandakirti, and one is the Shantideva, and, uh, and then it's one is um, Sankhya Jang. Uh, Buddha Palita. So these three, if we try to more to study more and more, and a hundred percent, we will uh, come to know what is the Parsankika's point of view, and especially Nagarjuna's understanding of emptiness. So mm, that's what Tamatsongkapa said in here. <coughs> And then uh, in this uh, the same line uh, before, uh, how Lama Tsongkhapa prays uh, Buddha Shakyamuni. This is one of the favorite quote. I always uh, uh, try to remember this. There are so many uh, different ways to praise uh, Buddha Shakyamuni through his qualities. But Lama Tsongkhapa, he said it a little differently. So, subjin jachi le she kunji tir jigdin kunji madin za she te sa sum do la lam san chun be mi tuwa ma be ni me ta to jong se chi to te dang go tir tuwa. No. Ani la ti ti she chun la ra chun de chi. So she translate. Okay. So this salutation or this kind of praise to Buddha Shakyamuni it reads, "You are the treasure of all excellent insights, profound and vast, the unacquainted friend of everyone in this world." the eyes for beings of the three realms to see the excellent path. Munindra, the Buddha, the sun among preachers, sustain us at all times. Mm -hmm. So, in here, especially when he's saying, we have to see Buddha as our friend. And, uh, and especially it's said, a friend, Karsatan, that unacquainted, un acquainted, acquainted, Madiba. Uh, Madiba, no, Madiba. Mm. And it's more like if you really become so close, then you feel so dear, dear to each other. And then the question is, how long, uh, how uh, up to now, where you been? This is automatically coming out, mm. isn't it? So, uh, first, the, from these words, I try to look, sometimes, uh, refuge, great, you are the, 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 the one kind of the, I don't know if we say almighty to Buddha or not, but you are the powerful one, you are the savior. We can say this, but it is necessary to see how much Buddha has loved us, how much his quality is made to help us. We don't kind to of get familiar with this. We just want something like, oh, I need emptiness, like the Bodhicitta. But first we don't try to make a friend with the Buddha. That's the problem. 
So here, Lama Tsongkhapa's way of praising is, now while praising, he felt like he, from his side, 100%, he's a friend and he's kind of open-hearted towards us. But we are the one who is always uh, give maybe 100 steps back. So now, recognizing his qualities, we see you are the karsa iku uh, so this is uh, uh, sometimes when I look at the Buddha's statue, I make this prayer. So it's sometimes very touching. So this is why I shared. Okay. <clears throat> now mm, we will read the. Uh, this one, Jagar Kyatu, Madimita Awakara Nama, Pergir Umaran Juba Shecho, Shecho Shusu Sechi, Dear Kanaju, Umani Umi Tinjur Juba Chavi Shiris, Ta Uma Juba Seti, Uma Seti, Tawa di Uma Koyachi Dane Mangu Yavinane, Tanda di Uma di Uma di Uma Tawa Shirabuko. Now, with regard to the title, Rubuchi just read the title. Um, so you read the title. Basically, it says in Sanskrit the name is such and such, and Rinpoche just read it. And in Tibetan, this is the title. So that was the first part Rinpoche read. And then Rinpoche explained, well, the title of this text is entering the middle way. If you translate it into into English, it's entering the middle way. And the middle way here refers to actually another text. So it's basically entering that other text, the other text being called the, the fundamental wisdom by Nagarjuna. So it's basically saying entering the middle way, which is here the fundamental wisdom that was composed by Nagarjuna. And the, uh, th this text entering the middle way, it enters the middle way in two ways. It enters the text by Nagarjuna, the fundamental wisdom, in two ways by way of the profound and by way of the extensive. So these are the two ways by which Chandakirti enters into this text. Sometimes it's also translated as supplements, supplements uh, Nagarjuna's text. So there are two translations of the title of the text we are studying here. That's supplement. Lubin Dawa Tabigi Danda Uma Jubadi, and a bit Gabu Shibiji, Sabbat the Jacha when you give one a Shibiji Dana Pub, and El Habato Sem Zamba Sem Zambigi, a summer don't down to your bar, and the Zudi Narone lecture Nengoyati Kariume, I am Kagoyati, Mixage Uma Jubanaloya, two more my bitch songs. So Chandakirti's text, Chandakirti's entry into the middle way or entering the middle way, on one hand it's very extensive, but at the same time it's also very profound. Moreover, it deals with another Buddhist philosophical school, which is called the Chittamatra, or translated into English, the mind-only school. And so what Chandakirti does in his text, he takes the different views of the mind-only school and explains which one we can take on in accordance with the Prasangika school and which ones are to be refuted. Mm. And then actually after the title has been given, 
Then the text continues saying, I pay homage to the gentle Lord Manjushri. So Manjushri being the Buddha of wisdom, therefore the text starts with this homage because this text sets forth emptiness and therefore is related to the, or connects to the, to the mind realizing, to the wisdom realizing emptiness. Therefore, it bows, it pays homage to Manjushri, the Buddha of uh, wisdom. um, so this title at the very, this kind of homage at the very beginning, it's actually the Lotsawa, which is the Tibetan word for, or the Sanskrit word for a translator. So the translators who translated this text from the original Sanskrit into Tibetan, they added this line of homage. And there has been a certain decree by one of the Dharma kings in the past, so the Tibetan Dharma kings of Tibet, um, who were studying the different Nalanda master texts, and there were so many different texts, so kind of learning about them, analyzing them, and there were so many different texts, so it was really difficult to get a sense of what is each text about, which is why this decree was passed in that um, those those translators who translated the texts from the original Sanskrit in their line of homage, which traditionally is added before the translation, there are certain subjects that they should pay homage to, which indicates then the subject matter. So Rinpoche says, it's like when you have a computer nowadays, you can easily type in and you know what the subject matter is, you can easily find out. So similarly here, um, you have this, this first line which indicates what is the main subject matter. Now there are three uh, objects of homage uh, in accordance with the three kind of main topics or in accordance with the uh, kind of text sections, if you like, so that, that all the texts can be divided into what are called the three baskets. So in terms of subject matter, you have the uh, Abhidharma basket, you have the Vinaya basket, and you have the uh, yeah, the oh, sutra basket, sutra, sutra. the sutra basket. So the sutra basket, the Vinaya basket, and the Abhidharma basket. So in other words, Dharma. sutra here means the sutric teaching, so the, that's one basket, one kind of entity of texts. The second is the Vinaya, which are the disciplinary teachings, uh, the kind of rules and so forth, and Abhidharma refers to wisdom. And so uh, the wisdom teachings, as the name suggests, they mainly teach on wisdom. The Vinaya mainly teaches um, um, on um, moral discipline, and the um, the Abhidharma te no the Abhidharma teachings sorry I'm getting confused the Abhidharma basket mainly teaches on wisdom the Vinaya mainly on moral discipline and the Sutra Sutric teachings may mainly on uh, meditative concentration and so you know right away when it says in the very beginning of this text for instance I bow to Manjushri then that refers to the Abhidharma. Uh, basket or the, the those teachings that mainly teach wisdom. In terms of those texts that mainly teach, so the sutra basket that mainly teach meditative concentration, then the homage is directed at Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. And with regard to 
uh, the Vinaya basket, that is those teachings that present the moral discipline, the rules and regulations, but more specifically uh, moral discipline, well then homage is directed at uh, the omniscient mind of a Buddha. And that way you always know which of the three sections it belongs to and therefore which is the main topic. One of those questions. Pandian Dawa Tabigi, any Chuju, Shung the Zambig of the Chuju, the Karaze or Zedu, any Chidani, Jat Chubajo, Mambuju Yoris, Talente Chubaju Yadi, and Juninji Chimbu, Juninji Chimbu, Chubaju, Sunche, and the Yendo Sanjay Janum, Tomandi Sanjay Changus, and Bala, Ninjis and the Nusum, Changus and Mikis, and Namdi, two Sigi, and the Ninji Chimbulia, Chubaju Yadi, Pandan Dawa Tabitos Nayaris. So it takes me a moment to find in here. So anyway, uh, Chandakirti, then after the homage by the translators, Chandakirti pays homage. And there are many different ways to pay homage, but the way Chandakirti does it here is by way of paying homage to great compassion as the cause, as a causal aspect which uh, is described as great compassion. So the words here that Rinpoche just read are Shravakas and middle-level Buddhas arise from sovereign sages. Just a sec, I need to find it because it's all over. Buddhas are born from bodhisattvas. The compassionate mind and non-dual cognition as well as the awakening mind, these are causes of bodhisattvas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, then you in just that, okay? I'll try to say something in English. <coughs> uh, the reason here why he uh, Chandra Kirti uh, make uh, homage to the uh, the compassion, especially the great compassion, I guess. Because he gave us a reason, the saying, uh, Buddhas are born from uh, Bodhicitta. Then Bodhicitta is, that, that comes from uh, the, the compassion. So that is the reason he said, I wanted to make a homage to the uh, compassion. So, this I find so grateful because in uh, in this world, maybe the time of the uh, Chandakirti and the time of Buddha, we just look for our great masters. And then uh, uh, that great master is especially well known and uh, who has more followers, who is great. Uh, like from you hear so many praises. But most important, what Chandakirti is trying to say here is, um, if one really admires Buddha's qualities, then he or she should really admire where all this great quality is, is coming from. And then, automatically, we need to look into, into the, uh, the, the seed of this, all the great things or knowledge is coming. And then you can say, this is coming from this so-called, I have this compassion. It's already here. Sometimes we say, don't find your refuge from outside. Once you recognize that is a, uh, a refuge that is inside you, that means not yet manifest, but still, once you recognize, then you see, ah, oh, if I can hold to this, if I can make, uh, put a refuge, give a refuge to this, then, as Buddha said, 
you are your own protector. That is what we need. So here, uh, the great, the kind, great master uh, Chandakirti is saying uh, that uh, the Nyantul Karsa, Shavaka, Shavaka, and then uh, Sanjitin Buddhas, the middle, middle level middle Buddhas, level, <laughs> <laughs> middle level Buddhas, <laughs> and uh, and then. Uh, Bodhic Bodhisattvas all are uh, coming from Buddha's teaching. And then Buddha himself is coming from the Bodhicitta and then from the compassion. Buddhas, uh, born. Buddhas are born from Bo Buddhas. Buddhas are born from Bodhisattvas. Bodhisattvas are born from this compassion. Uh, now, if we bring up some kind of discussion in the West, in, in the East, and especially in a Tibetan, uh, if you ask a Tibetan family, they will uh, just say, oh, compassion is so great, great. And there's no much uh, questions to them. But in the West, there is a great question about compassion, mm -hmm. saying, which is a good, but not enough understanding. Because when I'm, I was studying in Canada, uh, one of uh, our teachers, that uh, a grammar teacher, uh, grammar is a, a tough subject. So then uh, one time she came quite late. And then she said, well, I was in the traffic and I was listening to the news that a big earthquake happened in Nepal at that time. And then many people lost their lives. There were so many casual, casualties, in way, casualties. And then she said, what to do? So, so many crazy things are going on and uh, we cannot do anything. So I have lots of suffering by my own. So I don't have a room for somebody's more kind of suffering. I don't have a room for this. So I switch up the, uh, my radio. And now, uh, back to normal life. She said something like this. So, I think I am the only one just felt like a great start, but the ending wasn't good. <laughs> 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 so, I couldn't say anything. I cannot say, no, you have to uh, become Buddha in order to help sentient beings. Uh, I cannot say anything to the her. And I felt like, wish I can say something. So I would thought like, sometimes it's difficult to say. But that, uns that uh, uh, question, that kind of the instant, uh, instant, uh, instinct, uh, left something, a great imprint in me. So uh, almost like if one year back, during the pandemic, his Holiness given an online teaching. At that time, His Holiness Dalai Lama said, compassion is, uh, compassion is beautiful. He said, compassion is so beautiful because compassion we can see like in, in two aspects. One is uh, looking for an answer. Why? Why this is happening? Why this has to happen? Why? And secondly, that the first aspect has to help the second aspect, which is the answer. The answer is, what is the solution to this? And I need to do something for this. So if you have these two aspects within you, that is the complete compassion. That's what His Holiness said. So every time now I look at the, when somebody says compassion, I go like, this is the real compassion. So it is beautiful, isn't it? The, the lady, the teacher whom she said about, I don't have a, a room for more sufferings to think about because I have my own suffering. 
So if she is, she had found an answer to the what her that what she is dealing with, if she has this answer, then she could say, I can deal with my suffering. So maybe if somebody can do the same as me, then they can also face the problem. They cannot change, but they can be strong. They can move on. That's a good word, move on. But in the West, sometimes in the West, yes, when we are going through a difficult time, what other will say is, don't think about this, just move on. It's move on like you have to move on on the suffering. It's not like you deal with the, uh, that problem or the suffering and then move on. It's more like you pretend like you bury down something at the, uh, like a, a cat buries the poop like this <laughs> and there goes away. But the, it comes up <laughs> somehow. <laughs> so that is something uh, every time now I hear uh, the mm, compassion, I always have this, the trigger comes out, the body soreness taught. So this is great. <clears throat> so uh, here also, if you look at, uh, how Buddhas become strong, how Bodhisattvas become strong, how, uh, how the Shavakas and the middle Buddhas become strong. It is due to the compassion. So this is necessary. So hope you understand what I <laughs> said. <laughs> okay. And this is what I said. Uh, and it's actually, Rumba Chisa, it's quite interesting, this term shravaka, in English it's often translated as heroes. So they're a type of practitioners who existed at the time of the Buddha. And so the reason they're called heroes is because they listen when they hear the teachings of the Buddha but not necessarily for their own purpose. So they would listen traditionally when the Buddha was around. They would listen to all the teachings the Buddha gave, but not all of them they would practice. Some of them would be teachings actually for the bodhisattva. So instead of practicing them themselves, they would pass them on to the, to the bodhisattvas. So the Buddha said so, such and such, and gave teachings based on what the Buddha had taught them to the bodhisattvas. So that is the meaning also of Shravaka here the one who listens and passes it on. So that, it is some, I have the simil, sim, uh, similarity qualities. <laughs> <laughs> I hear from my teachers <laughs> and I share with you and I practice this much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Uh, middle ね、ちょ、ま、作業で、せ、ま、と、あに、あ、3時に、せ、これ、ミックスセブスケよ、ま。あ、ちょ、これ、あ、ちょ、みんなみんな、はごま、そら、走れ、そそぎ、ドンバ
Now, um, as you noticed in the first line, it talks about the middle level Buddhas, which are usually also called Pratyeka Buddhas, or in English, solitary realizers. Now, with regard to these solitary realizers, as they're called, um, Rinpoche says, well, the difference between them and the other practitioners, so you have what are called hearers, shravakas, you have then solitary realizers or particular Buddhas and bodhisattvas. So Rinpoche said the difference between them, for instance, the, um, the solitary realizers between the others is in terms of accumulating merit. Uh, but it could also be the shravakas or the hearers, they also accumulate merit, but less merit, and their goal is to become liberated for their own benefit. Whereas the uh, solitary realize their motivation may be to become Buddhas for their own benefit, as opposed to bodhisattvas who want to become Buddhas for the benefit of all sentient beings. So there may be a difference in terms of their motivation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Carsore and the Chuku to be a day, Bazo Shukum Shivche, and Tigichedo, Nende Legend Habe, and a son of the Ishig told such. Tabado Ishig told to be a Shujim Bazo Cheni, that Gaumango, a big Yoris, and a Tainayan Tigi Katsus Padule to Rusila Dutsembe, that Randin Chuku to Motovich, Garojineta, Wotuni. Rounding Casus by the labor situation, that tie never son of the lenit and do talk every day. That some of the town do Tandonia, Rang, Jinzing, the Yakun, Chimbuja, Tamato, Pato, and Tene, Chigi, Sandy, you come on Tandu to Matovich, or the Landita, Rangel Kali, Ratuanich. Now, to give you further explanation with regard to the solitary realizer, as he's called, or as they are called, these types of practitioners, um, also sometimes described as middle level Buddhas or um, Pratyeka Buddhas. So, those who strive to become enlightened uh, or, or attain the same state as a Buddha, but for their own benefit. So, actually, when we talk about um, the mind of enlightenment, the mind that aspires to become fully enlightened in the continuum of a bodhisattva, well, that kind of mind is directed at the benefit of all sentient beings, in the sense that this kind of mind has two aspirations. The aspiration for the benefit of all sentient beings, so to achieve a certain goal for the benefit of others, and the aspiration to, to, to attain a goal for one's own benefit. So both are contained in there, one's own benefit, but also the benefit of all sentient beings. In contrast to that, a Pratyeka Buddha, or a solitary realizer, or middle-level Buddha, so many different terms, well, that kind of person does not mainly focus on the benefit of all sentient beings, does not aspire to become fully enlightened for the benefit of all sentient beings, but mainly for his own benefit, and works works really hard to attain that, has to work really hard to attain that. I mean, to strive not just for self-liberation, but for self-enlightenment, if you like. So, therefore, he needs to work much harder with such type of, th these types of practitioners who are 
called solitude, realizes I have to work so much harder and accumulate more, in particular, wisdom. I have to accumulate even more wisdom than, for instance, hearers have. So they have to train themselves much more in wisdom. However, in, in actuality, their goal is not realistic. You cannot attain what is called the Dharmakaya. It's described uh, the, the, basically the mind of a Buddha, if you like, and the qualities, the, in particular the mental qualities of Buddha are described as Dharmakaya. Or if you kind of phrase it differently, you can't attain the state of a Buddha. So you can't attain a Dharmakaya. You can't attain the state of a Buddha just for your own benefit. That's just not realistic. And so therefore... Um, to reach that state of Buddhahood, which is described as the state that is free from any kind of fault, from any kind of limitation, and um, is complete in all its qualities. I mean, all the qualities any living being can actually attain. So in order to attain that, it's important to do this, to, to strive for it for the benefit of all sentient beings. That's mm. The words the word yang, the rich word, but because what the Napa, Napa, the very sech, Tadi and Nagatis, Chimbridge, sorry. Turned the Umakum for the short and the winner, Chupsi did it. Chupsi, 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 Tachatanga, え、リンバティ、シンドチェバインビチュロス。え、ジュ、ジュプンソ、ジュプンソバセティ、タ、サンジェジュビエギ、ジュディチェ、ジュディ、タニンジシンボルタンダネガブジャベイナ、ディシ
um, of a medicinal tree that that could produce desired fruits. One nurtures the plant with special care during its sapling stage. Um, so one knows that at the at the end, this medicinal tree would, will grow. So if we if we cherish the sapling, if we pay special attention to the cause, then we know in in the future it will give rise to this medicinal t uh, tree. So here. Lamazon Kaba, as a third reason, just gives this analogy to better understand why to pay homage really to the causes of Buddhahood instead of paying homage to Buddha, him or herself. Um, here, yeah, I think it's a good time to share this uh, uh, story uh, uh, that uh, happened, uh, I think, uh, uh, in Tibet. So one teacher would give a practice to the student uh, to meditate on a uh, merit field. And then uh, he he is doing this uh, uh, practice. And then after such a long time, he came out and then visit his teacher and then share his uh, experience. And then he said, I've been doing all the things what you taught me, but the realization is not coming. And then uh, uh, his teacher uh, checked his uh, practice and then found out that uh, he asked uh, in the merit field uh, whom you are uh, visualizing and then teachers and the root gurus and all, every, everybody is there. And then uh, he said, now still maybe one kind being who is so grateful to you in your life, maybe that is missing somewhere. Then he made it, he tried to think, think, think. And finally he said, there is one uh, person who taught me uh, the Tibetan epipeticals. And then that, uh, he's not that knowledgeable, uh, knowledgeable, uh, knowledgeable, knowledgeable, and not that smart, <laughs> but he's been kind. So is maybe that person? And then his teacher said, that's the one. Bring him into his marriage, your marriage field, and then check. Then maybe the realization will come. So he went back and he practiced. And then he got the realization. So what to take away from here? From the beginning, Buddha has taught this. The Buddha said in his sutra uh, called Heap of jewels. Heap of jewels. Sutra. 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 Heap of jewels. That's good. Huh? Heap of jewels. <laughs> uh, in that sutra, he said, uh, So, uh, uh, he said, uh, make who make a karsure uh, homage Pay homage. Pay homage to the the first moon, uh, not directly to the uh, moon. New moon. Yeah? New, new moon. moon. New moon. <laughs> new moon. Uh, not the full moon. That's what he said. And then later, uh, when uh, on the when it come to the meaning, then Buddha said, uh, make prostrations uh, to the newly Buddha uh, sattva who got a new bodhicitta just today, just now, and uh, not a regular to the Buddha. That is a very strong message. That's a really strong message. And now this all comes to uh, appreciate, appreciation. Appreciating. You know, appreciating. Maybe some of our practice are not coming, especially bodhicitta, um, because we always forget to whom to uh, respect, start the respect from, and that leads to somewhere. Sometimes we forget that. Mm. 
so uh, uh, so what that really helps uh, also we can say how to this is more to the practice level so now can how can we take this into like our samsaric <laughs> way of living so sometimes we always forget to appreciate our uh, t teachers in the west are respected more like a friend not as like we don't give much kind of respect and like in the family tradition, in the before uh, earlier uh, times, uh, there's a kind of lots of a bond, bond, bonds, 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 family bonds. But, but now more it's becoming like, yeah, I did my own thing, and the, my parents are just giving me this body. That's it. So this kind of way of thinking also can bring maybe obstacle obstacle or to uh, get a uh, maybe peaceful life or to have a nice family together this kind of bond can be because because what here how buddha is saying if you really wanted the peaceful mind, which is the bodhicitta, then you have to respect the, uh, the seed of the compassion. And then, Ninji Sachimbutsigu, so here sometimes some discussion on how to translate or how to which kind of terminology to use. Anyway, so Rumbishi here what he explains is well, when we talk about the state of a Buddha, that is Buddhahood, as a goal. Uh, that we may strive to. Well, we need to understand that the kind of well-being or happiness a person experiences once they reach that state is unsurpassable. It's this unsurpassable state of bliss and happiness. But to reach that, to reach such a state, you need a special cause. You need a special seat. And that seat is great compassion. So that needs to be first planted, that great compassion, in order to then slowly progress towards the state of a Buddha. Now, Applying that same explanation to worldly, everyday life, I mean, to be able to make a living, to, to live successfully, just leaving aside the Dharma, leaving aside any kind of spiritual practice, but just being successful in your worldly life, you don't need to take refuge in Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. But instead, have that strong bond with your family. Appreciate their kindness. Appreciate the good things, what you've taken away 
uh, from your family, what they've given to you. So to, to have that kind of strong appreciation for your parents and for other members of your family. So to think along these lines, that kind of respect, that kind of appreciation, because that helps you, helps you much more to be successful in whatever you do. So in that way, you see there's this correlation, right? Kind of having appreciation for the causes of Buddhahood and therefore that becoming a cause for Buddhahood. And likewise here, to have success in life, to um, be grateful, to be respectful and so forth with regard to what you received from your family. And again, that helps you to be successful. And this could be a little tip for the people who celebrate Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> Not only enjoy the turkey, um, but then also family gathering. Mm -hmm. So one can set the mind like, I'm going to meet these kind people in my life who really give me a lot, lots of time, energy, and so much uh, uh, love that even uh, I watch one of Anila's talk, and then she was uh, talking about um, <laughs> that, uh, like a, a newborn uh, you know, person come into the world, and then a mother won't say like, "Who's this stranger?" And then automatically it's like it's mine. So no question, this uh, actually it's a stranger kind of thing. But stranger, 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 uh, stranger. But it's like it's part of me. Already given this kind of a love is already there. So this only this kind of thing is kind of enough to bring into the appreciation. So uh, this is uh, also necessary. So these all hints, Buddha say this from his experience, but he also do this kind of practice through his family, in family, because look at uh, Buddha's way of life. Um, one time I was giving a talk and then somebody paused me and said, you're saying the Buddha is so kind, I have one complaint. And he said, well, I said, yes, please tell me. And then he said, well, he is a great master of compassion, but then how can he leave this infant of his and a wife and just suddenly leave everything and just look for a for search for a truth? He can go look for search for the truth after the, the infant, the boy gets a proper education, and then he can leave. So <laughs> that was like a big thing, yes. I cannot say anything at that, at that time. But then when I look at the picture of Buddha, later he got the answer, searching the truth, and then he comes back home and gives the teaching. And then he educates. And then he gave to someone that a father, one a normal father cannot give, the liberation. Rahula God, the son of the Buddha God, liberation, which we are looking for today. But his son got it. That is amazing. So I didn't have this answer at that time, but I felt like if I meet this person, I might still, <laughs> we have an unfinished business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think uh, this is a, mm, a great one to share. So that's what I'm sharing. This is the thing that the Dinamarch situation here, the middle of the region, the Chanju Simbi, the Ninji Tachimbo Yindan, the Chanju Sim Tachimbo Rishasich. The Chanju Sim Delia, and the Jutso Nabasumchi, so on the あの、ランジュ、ディルティンショーソムセナビジクソングロバ。アディナンディシェンニンジセムダニエソメロダチャンジュセムニジセナムジュース。え、ニンジギセムセチ、ニンジニンジチェ。ニエスメベロスドトン
the compassionate mind and non-dual cognition as well as the awakening mind, these are the causes of bodhisattvas. And so here it's saying there are three main causes, well, first being the compassionate mind, great compassion, non-dual cognition referring to the wisdom realizing emptiness or the ultimate nature of all phenomena, and then bodhicitta. Those are described as the three causes of a bodhisattva. Ningjisayati,ani,sta,deshes,mixi,tabi,omari,tangi,tangi,tangi,tangi,tangi,tangi,tangi,tangi,tangi,tangi,tangi,tangi,tangi,tangi,tangi,tangi,tangi,tangi
Now, with regard to uh, the first verse, the first verse, the last three, li- the last two mm-hmm. lines uh, mention the three causes of a bodhisattva. Now, the three causes are great compassion, then as it's called non-dual cognition, which is the wisdom realizing emptiness, and bodhicitta. But here it's bodhicitta that is not uncontrived. It's contrived bodhicitta in the sense of the mind that wishes to become enlightened for the benefit of all sentient beings. That doesn't arise spontaneously yet. That still requires some effort. So this this type of bodhicitta, contrived bodhicitta, as well as the mind realizing emptiness and great compassion, these are the causes of a bodhisattva. And it's important to understand that. So it's not just great compassion, but also uh, wisdom, wisdom in particular with regard to the ultimate nature of all phenomena. That is also important uh, as a cause for entering the bodhisattva path or becoming a bodhisattva. And likewise, this contrived, this non-spontaneous aspiration to become enlightened for the benefit of all sentient beings. Each of them play a huge part. They support each other, and they're all important to then eventually become a bodhisattva, enter the bodhisattva path or the Mahayana path. (laughs) Ani Chanju Sim Kebala Ani Kashi Tony Samu Kugres Sung Yan Chik A Kashi Ugumaris Chichi Sung Yan Chik Mampuyos. Ta Susugi Dinashin Chichi Yanko Gomishabina Chanju Sim and Jitumba Chiki Yos Yosari Ta Yina Yang Puta Wuch Puta Wuya Wuchi Yong Bila Ani Hawato Chigi Tanda Ninjung in Ere Anni Tanda Ninji, Tan Ninji in Ere Dizu Yabuji Yonella, Tangi Yawaram Chig Sumanashi. Go Ninji, say to Tembe, Ranshinki, Anni Tubachik down, Tuba de la Lehen Rad Yotrishas. That Tuba Caressana, Dungin Gitsawa de Mabasutur Tumat, did it? Dunging gets out the member so to raise a teller, da Dunging gets out the part ya, te on to da number sign you with Shuman Arone, Dungzin said it. Dan Dungzin sing it the member servala, Uncle Dungzin de Dunzin Dung also gave it low damage of a sheriff. Dim chick, my dear Bala, and it Dung the carsore, you must set home to study the way. You must set home, Marie. Yomong is our sematon, Yomon said who married say Gita, now was on Jew Gita, two moments in big Gita, a casual of Chadi do, and a Ranchingi, Sam Narolia, Chigi, Tungi, some of the edge Nankachimushi Chadi. The Induzambe, a co Pasure Ninji Putar Tonyala, and a Tungi go to search Tonyach Tuna, and Ranchingi. Tombanis in Kera Chamber and had the summer tango to say, summer the Mayimba, did some shimayimba. Do need the courage in the good to say it, or didn't get cheered to do it. Yes. Now, this may be a little confusing for you, Rimbachia says. Well, when we hear, in order to generate compassion, you need to realize emptiness. Or do you really need to realize emptiness? Some scholars would say, yes, you do, and others would disagree. But of course, it's natural that. You, this kind of question arises. Uh, anyway, so before you can actually generate bodhicitta, that actual spontaneous mind that wishes to become enlightened for the benefit of all sentient beings, you need to generate a similitude of that, a kind of contrived version. Um, and also renunciation. So for oneself to be free from all sufferings, from all afflictions and so forth, before wishing that for others, wishing for other sentient beings to be free from the same. And of course, you need compassion. But again, to go back to compassion, when we talk about compassion, as Rinpoche mentioned earlier, His Holiness described compassion in one of his teachings in such a way that there is a question and there is an answer. Before generating uh, compassion, there's a certain question and there's an answer. The question is, what is the root cause of suffering? 
So compassion, wishing for other sentient beings to be free from suffering. What is the cause of suffering? What is the root cause of suffering? And can that root cause be eliminated or not? So then, when you ask this question, you need to investigate. What is that root cause? Well, the root cause is the mind that grasps at a self that doesn't exist. At a certain type of self, as a particular kind of self, the way not self in general, but it, 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 it grasps at an unrealistic self that we mistakenly perceive. Now, is it possible that wrong view, can that be eliminated, that grasping at an unrealistic self? And we come to the answer that it's possible. Possible because there is a wisdom that realizes the non-existent, non-existence of that particular self. So in terms of what it perceives, the mind that realizes the non-existence of such a self is in direct, op is a, is, is in a direct opposition. That is, it perceives the direct opposite of that root wrong view. That is the root cause of all our trouble. They're in direct opposition. So the mind that perceives its unrealistic self in terms of what it perceives is the self, whereas the mind that is the solution to, this, to, to the problem is the mind that perceives exactly the opposite. And because it perceives the opposite, it perceives the non-existence of that unrealistic self, it can actually remove the root cause of our, all our problems. And if you remove the root cause of all our problems, you remove the, 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 the problems themselves. All the other afflictive emotions are removed if the root is gone. And in that way, it is helpful to realize emptiness. It's not necessary to realize emptiness in order to generate great compassion but to generate a type of great compassion that is supported by wisdom. So it's an excellent type of great compassion that is more effective. A great compassion supported by emptiness, well, that is important, that is helpful, and that is why it's suggested or it's, it's, it's recommended to, um, to reflect and meditate on emptiness and so forth in order to generate great compassion. So Rinpoche says it's not that we should just think of emptiness because emptiness is famous and so let's just you know meditate on emptiness because it is so well known. No, it actually supports our practice and it supports in particular great compassion. Namji, <laughs> Dokrana Tsidi, Rangi Chuniki, Tekonani Tone, Chuni did Sem Jenam de Kondo Chuba Chao Yamne, Sem Kanja Vatin, Chanjuk Sem Sech, Digi Kayo. Call a short short on Dijena, Tandanga Zibuka, the Shugu Chig Jablo Don Dito. Taran Chuba incident, short on Chiba, Jonga incident. Did you do some of the shot? Taran did Tidil do. Nigisem だ。<音><音><音><音><音><音><音> That 
Tak lain di kerung ini lain kerja dia tu macam, lain tangguh susu kanya dia lain jam atau itu dia. Jadi zanga tangguh kerja cuma dia dikasih orang rangi cuni kita ni tanes tangguh. Ani cuni di, ani semasa tamje di kondo cuba cawu sedo. Tadi ni dengan ni dia sih nak rone, ane di pejen dia kerja sura. Tak cenderung tu ni saya di samblo dina lu tu licik leung tu wa. Sem kahang je bateri, cangjuk sem saya sung dus. Ina di cangjuk sem jerum bici jawab jawab tu sem cok cik rejas. Di ni licik licik jom jaga. Hmm, nice. Now Rumpishi gives gives some explanation on non-dual cognition. So this term non-dual cognition, which is also mentioned as one of the causes of a bodhisattva and therefore as one of the causes of Buddhahood. Um, here a, a sutra is recited um, in the text. So the text gives the quote of a sutra. Actually, the, the name of the sutra is not mentioned but um, Rinpoche said it's the sutra that can be, the name of the sutra can be translated as perfectly gathering the teachings sutra. Anyway, the words in this sutra, they say, having realized the suchness of one's own reality, one generates the mind with the thought, I will help sentient beings realize this ultimate nature of things. And this is called awakening mind. Now the way... Here, the wisdom realizing emptiness or the non-dual cognition, as it's also called, the way it is described here is not separate from the mind of enlightenment. So Rumi says that is important because when we just talk of the mind of enlightenment and talk about removing the suffering of sentient beings and striving towards such a state, we may get exhausted. We may get exhausted by the sheer amount of suffering that we're now basically responsible for in terms of having to remove it. And so Rinpoche says, here it's kind of bringing the two together, bringing the two together, bringing together also the realization of emptiness, so the suchness of one's own reality, applying it to oneself, as Rinpoche spoke about before, like you need to apply it to yourself first, and then realize or have the aspiration to uh, apply also to other sentient beings. So realize your own suchness, get the solution, understand there is a solution to the problem. And then based on that, generate the two types of aspirations. Own, also the aspiration for one's own benefit, to wanting to become enlightened, wanting to attain the, the mind of a Buddha, but also for the benefit of all sentient beings. So the aspiration for the welfare of other sentient beings and the aspiration for, the, for one's own benefit. Both are combined in that, based on a thorough understanding. Chizanga, how we have still fifteen minutes. Chizanga ta di namsha jundo chikasore manju pejalo abe karore nyamlen chebe karore chik chik. Tajam bodin je, di kalau sore connection suai je orang, kalau jawab suai, sih bangku je. Shun tang susu je, kudo je, nyamnen je ada tu. Jawab suai je, sih bangku je, kalau haru orang. Tapi nang di dalam je cah cah, tapi nang orang tu nampak jundu, cangju sem kom dengi kasi je, abe tak sembunyi tam je tu ni tu je cah nang nyamnen cik marung, sampai sampai je je. Ani tenye je je, tu je tam je le ni je pentol je, ni abe lo di je orang selawat mado. ที่รู้เกี่ยวกันดังตรงนี้ก็นั่งซื้อจิมจิชิงคันเดียร์ไหมอันนี้เชียงเลพันโตเชื่อว่าเลพันโตเชื่อเกี่ยวกับจิมม
Sem chuni ji gang ting le shaya dri sha. Sem chuni ji gang le sha to be na, sem machul be gang le sha sha. De yin du chan be, rang duin dhkarang gang le ta zho dhu ya chi. Ta rang duin yang jo chiki bu tao ro karso gore dang ya di, ngangzu ki shen duin be me lung ki dhub tu so na, shen duin be me lung ki dhub tu so na, Ani be dire ta kar sore rando yon so zog be ki kwa chi ki or be na <hesitation> digi ngi lagwa yi tum zeng kar re sena be na dra chum ba zog ani kwa kwa la chi chi tu sinya bar shu chi te yon du sen be ta na ta be chi ki kia wa ni kia wa du so kom jab ni on du ani ta na hawa du ran ji dra chum ba ri ngi re ani chi zang ka san ji ki du ba na mi na zo ten chi ni kwa zo kwa kwa la ya. Ya lang che, <hesitation> ane tene san ji gi be tu ba da me da shen tun da me da tun ba tong tu tsen be, di ngal min tu ta se che, kurang jom tin di gi nang tu ya son to be chi ngal le tan tu min tu di kari che be re, se tu tsen be, ane jom tin di gi tan tu yin che rang rang tun zong min tu sung tu wa, ju shen tun che sung min tu wa, ju tan tu yin rang tun zong min tu sung tu wa, ane rang tun che sung zong sa be ngal be tong ba ni le che ju tu nyam ba sha ni tu se tu yin se tu. Diang tan diang diang zong yong ma ris, diang diang zong ba nang an na xin xie xie xin diang bai mi lun yu du tu ris. Di ris lo ani xin ni ani a gya wan nam ni ngua ni lang ma ri zui xie xie, ji ji ki san ji da san ji ki ani a da jong ba zui lo yang xin diang xie dang ji ki yang ji song di tu wa. Ta di ka ris xin tan da do do ka ris ris la na a ji ki xun ni xun ni tong xun xun ni le zui ju du nyang ba xia ba di ki. Rangdun zoba chik che aya chuni le tse chudun yamba shabe ting ne shendun be me tun gi ndubar che a ti ane <hesitation> shendun <hesitation> ka zoba rangdun chugu shendun suku se ti suku kawa ne chungba se ti chugu ne chungba re se chik ndun zoba chik chungba yina ane che zanga ngondo gi ne tanda gi jerun ba chik gi sung yoro ngondo gi ne le sung ba tang lu ti la mindo wa me do se ti chungba Ondo jen sung ya di di ba nyin di ndri di dang di tanda <hesitation> uma jube pandan dawa tra be gi ane chang jube sem se di nyi le ya ane kia ba chie yo ma le ta ba rang se se chie di bu lo. So um, Rabbi said, well, the, the, in this text it is explained that this citation actually focuses more on one aspect of this objective awakening mind, but of course it needs to be explained also with the complete aspects. And so in terms of that, Rabbi gave the following explanation. Um, when we study the text, when we practice the text, oftentimes uh, some terms or some explanations may be missing uh, in the sense that they, since they're missing, so we can't really make the connection between how we should practice, how we should go about it, how we should go about our practice in an effective way. So for instance, we may have the wish, may all sentient beings be free from suffering, may I help them, may I benefit them, but the question still remains how to do that. How should I benefit sentient beings? How do I go about it? So certain questions remain and they still need to be answered. It needs to become clearer uh, how we go about it. Now, we speak about the two aspirations, which can be actually translated in English in two ways. In Tibetan, both meanings are covered, but in English, they are not. So the aspiration for one's own benefit, the Tibetan word indicates one's own goal and one's own benefit. Both words are included. So you want to become enlightened for, for the benefit of sentient beings, but the aspiration is also one's own benefit and one's own goal. Both, both is contained in that. And of course, the, the goal of others and the benefit of others. So here focusing more on the benefit, the goal is one's own benefit and the benefit of other sentient beings. Now, enlightenment, including both benefits, my own benefit is achieving the mind of a Buddha, achieving what's called the Dharmakaya, which includes the mind of a Buddha, the qualities that are invisible to others, to others who are not Buddhas. That is my own benefit. And based on that, so if I become a Buddha, this is how Buddhahood benefits me. 
And so what do I actually need to do? For that, I need to focus on emptiness. Emptiness is the focus. Emptiness is the main practice uh, in general based on which I can then attain the mind of a Buddha. But it's actually, well, in the sense of, of course, you, you remove with the realization of emptiness, you remove the wrong perception of emptiness, and you, you, you purify your mind. And that leads to the purified mind of a Buddha. However, it's not totally complete. It seems that this is like the complete state, the complete benefit you've attained, but that's not the full benefit. The full benefit is only reaped when, or the full benefit is only achieved when you yourself can engage spontaneously, effortlessly, for the benefit of sentient beings. Work, work for sentient beings in a totally effortless and spontaneous way. Which shows basically that although when you reach the purified kind of mind, the purified state of mind of a Buddha, it benefits you, but it's incomplete without the benefit of others, without achieving the, what's called the form body of a Buddha, the rupakaya, the Buddha, that, the, the, the body, the appearance that other sentient beings can perceive and can communicate with. Therefore, to have the complete benefit, you yourself, you have the full benefit, you need to attain not just the mind of a Buddha, but also the manifestation of a, a Buddha's body that can benefit others. Therefore, in that way, um, it is explained that some beings who follow a different kind of path, although a Buddhist path, but a different kind of path, who, who aspire to become self-liberated, become liberated for their own benefit, well, they may meditate for many, many years on this, uh, on this concentration, just focusing on their state of liberation once they've, once they've attained that. However, at some point, they will be basically awoken. They will be, the Buddhas will awake them from that state. They will manifest in different ways. So may the, whether the hearers or solitary realizes there are beings who have reached self-liberation and are now awakened by the Buddhas. And the Buddhas communicate with them. Basically communicate to them, there's more work to be done, to, to put it bluntly. So it's like uh, they have a sense, I've done everything that can be reached. I've, I've, I've reached my fullest benefit. I mean, I can't, I can't reach any greater benefit than that because I liberated myself from suffering and its causes. However, the Buddhas indicate there's more work to be done because you're still not able to effortlessly and spontaneously work for the benefit of all sentient beings. And in that way, to really, although we distinguish between own benefit and other benefit and the, the one's own benefit refers to this purified mind, but that is incomplete without being able to spontaneously and effortlessly work for the benefit of all sentient beings. Only then do we personally uh, reach the fullest benefit we can reach for, for, for ourselves. Does that make sense? Okay. <laughs> uh, some maybe things, maybe it's going on the top of your head like this, and not going in here. Uh, yes, of course it takes time. But the most important, uh, the focus f for our stage is, uh, as we n are so familiar with this, uh, the, the mantra of the Heart Sutra, Deyata Gade Gade Bara Gade Bara Sam Gade Buddha Soha. But uh, mostly what we do is, I want to become Buddha. And then, does not have uh, any kind of a motivation to, because I want to become Buddha, I want to go through Gade, then Gade Gade, then Para Gade, and Buddha is Soha. So all these stages we skip so many, and then we automatically feel, yes, I want to become Buddha. And then instantly we become uh, uh, back to ordinary form very quickly. <laughs> so it is not a, uh, as Buddha said, if you really, really love to become Buddha, if you love me very much, then you have to appreciate the new Bodhisattva. And that means you really have to appreciate your own compassion that we do have. More you can put a water, now it's coming up like, 
three types of uh, you know, compassion, how we, we have to care. So, watering the well, Ningji Tonga Parsumti, Tomar Kejawa, Chudan Drawa, any Karsa, Pardo Kej, Tambo Sabian Drawa, any Pardo Kejawa, Chudan Drawa, Tamar Kejawa, Dibumi Batab, Chikti to Sunguva, what did I say? Tabaja Kejim was. So, um, actually, like, we. <laughs> Forget which part Rumshi was in English and which one was in Tibetan. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so Rumshi said well, now it's important to focus on the next verse, which describes compassion in its three forms. So the three forms of compassion: compassion, which is important in the beginning, which is like planting a seed; compassion, which is important in the middle, which is like adding water to the seed; and compassion, which is important at the end which is like uh, the ripening harvest, kind of enjoying the ripening harvest. So in that way, there are three types of compassion described in this text. So we have to, uh, first, uh, our focus should be how to take care of the seed as a, uh, the, uh, the compassion, the seed of this great compassion. So we need to look very deeply, do I have this ability to think like, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. So this is like, how can I be so open, so fully awakened for others? Like, can I, do I have ability of this? So this is necessary to, that means it is not necessary you to become Buddha. It is necessary to see oh, without becoming Buddha, how can I be helpful? So that is more powerful. So then you will see, if I this have this uh, this power, this kind of uh, uh, knowledge, then this is the only way to uh, to help others. Only this. So like His Holiness, one time uh, it's, uh, during the Mind and Life uh, conference, and then uh, uh, he did this opening. Uh, sorry, speech, mm -hmm. opening speech, and then he, he just said, he turned towards the the monks and nuns, and then uh, he said, now normally whatever we do practices you know, about compassion and so on, so on, we see many, many high level things, but now uh, to, to be honest, to help sentient beings, for an example, if we go uh, to a uh, seashore and one fish comes, or jumps out, or they, uh, comes out from the uh, the sea, then to help these fishes to put back on to put back into the sea. That's it. And now, the more uh, benefit we can do is descended being called human beings, with this having a special brain, these are the, our targets to help them. We have to educate them, we need to ha help them. So this we need to do it, so for this purpose, I'm having this conference with the scientists. This is how he ch change from the fish to the human, and then come to this bigger point. So this I always, have this in mind, saying, this is act of a bodhicitta. This is how he uh, take care of his compassion seat. I, I felt like this. So, uh, we all like to help lots of uh, animal insects and uh, poverty and so many things, but after giving so much energy, then question is left, how much I can do? how many people that can help these poor beings. So then automatically comes just giving foods, just giving a, uh, temporary shelters. It's not enough. There's bigger things, bigger things. So then automatically how much you build on that, on this type of foundation of the seed. This is how we have to become 
stronger and stronger. And then answer is like, oh, there is some, sometimes I think like to become Buddha is more like to say, I want to become so effortless, effortless, mm -hmm. effortless and then helpful at the same time. Because if you have a small effort, then it can stop so many things from you doing, uh, benefiting others. So then, uh, the, uh, the, in the one text it says, what is this slightly small uh, obstacle to become a Buddha? And then answer is like, smallest effort, motivation, so-called motivation, is the biggest obstacle. <laughs> so every time we have to do uh, to become Buddha and do some prayers, that is an obstacle also. <laughs> That's how it is described. So that means in order to become Buddha is like no question. To have sentient being, no question. You die for a sentient being, no question. You live for a sentient being, breathe, breath, taking breath for a sentient being, no question. So that means like Look at the, t the trees uh, of the Tushita here outside. It, it was just there, like, you cut me, you, uh, you just give me water, doesn't matter, I'm there for you. That's just powerful. So there's prayer saying, may I be, I can be like, a, uh, like a, the wild, uh, uh, the forest uh, that, whether you, uh, other sentient beings say good or bad or whatever they do, I will be there for them. So these also, it's in the Karsa, precious garland, yeah, precious in garland. the precious garland by Nagarjuna. So this is how it connects. So, okay, so it's 12.3. So we can stop here and then uh, see you in the next session at uh, 1.30, isn't it? 1.30. Okay, thank you. Sajji, Buji, Jim, and Dodam, Jazalish, and Jim, but this Sanjay Shindu. Do good on Dutch in the Jubra show, ye the Mongol Ramadela Gunayataya. Thank you.